Now uh, let's load uh, the scene 0, 3 displacement mode explain and actually uh, tune the parameters uh, to be able to see the uh, result uh, in the render region. But even before we, uh, s we create a render region uh, to see the uh, tessellation, I would invite you to install a uh, ink, tune ink shaders under uh, the camera right here, properties and go to the uh, land shader tab and uh, and then as assign a tune ink land shader this uh, this shader is capable of revealing the actual tessellation that the object will have at render time so under sampling you need to enable facet enable uh, such that you see this this uh, tessellation then I invite you to go to basic appearance and set the ink color to something that is really clear because the background will be black setting a blank ink line it will be a little bit difficult to see it so I would I would uh, suggest you use a constant color either red green or blue depending which one you prefer so I'll be using blue for for this uh, in, during this uh, presentation uh, also set the spread to something between 0 0.5 and 1 to be able to see the ink line properly so these these values are expressed in pixel space um, so that's all you, we need now if I uh, define or create a render region now I'll start to see the actual tessellation that will appear uh, over the object so I'm, I'm going to actually start to maximize the viewport here so we can really clearly see the actual tessellation now um, we'll go here under selection and, and uh, edit uh, the geometry approximation uh, piece set and uh, let me just uh, uh, close the render region here and uh, go over the hardware display tab as I uh, explained a little bit uh, in like in, in the other session, um, the uh, hardware display tab is meant to, to control how smooth the object should look into the OGL and wireframe display. So it will not this will not improve the quality at render time. It will still look it will still look uh, different uh, depending if you set this value here because it's only going to drive the OGL display. Now if you go to surface tab now these parameters are really controlling the uh, true uh, smoothness or a surface tessellation at rendering time. I'm going to lower this to uh, to a very uh, rough uh, tessellation in OGL and show you how these uh, parameters works. Now we'll go. We'll uh, take a look at uh, parametric here. So as explained in the previous session, parametric is a, is, a, is, not, is a technique that will not do in any sort of analysis of the surface, so it will, be, it will not do any adaptive tessellation. So if we set the actual density, the, the tessellation uh, density to 4, it will systematically break up the triangles uh, such that it will, uh, it will actually create uh, a lot of density where it is not needed. For example, a part of the can here is fairly flat. Uh, normally, we wouldn't need uh, we wouldn't need that much triangle right here. In fact, these triangle could actually be uh, deleted, and it would actually look still good. Um, as you can see now, also for the for the actual edge here, now we have a lot of tessellation going on here, uh, and and this is also uh, going to occur if we go along the the actual edge here the, the the border of the can then it will create a lot of tessellation and you know if if you really think about this if there not that much triangle is needed and in fact maybe one long triangle would be would be adequate to be able to create this surface so now um, parametric is is really is a non-adaptive tessellation technique. It's a brute force which subdivides all the triangles until it reaches the, uh, the refinement steps that is defined in the uh, geo approx. Now if we go back here we'll start to use one of uh, the uh, length, distance and angle. So let me put back these uh, UV step to zero so we can we can see it. We'll um, just uh, close the render region here 
Now, uh, as you can see here, it comes by default with Angle. And if we actually uh, define a render region with, uh, with the Angle, what is really neat about this is, as you can see already, it's uh, adding more tessellation where there's there's high probability of curvature uh, onto the, the mesh. So by lowering uh, this value right here, I will be able to start adding more um, tessellation where there's there's actually a lot of uh, uh, curve fluctuation or, or uh, whatever slope. So if it looks flat, it will not add any uh, any more like triangles that are needed. And, but whenever there's a little bit curved, then more triangles will get added. And that is, is really a nice settings for this type of, of objects, for example. So we have something cylinder with borders and bevels using NURBS, for example. That is pre it's, it's really a perfect settings for this. Now, if you go back and, and actually set this one back to 30, we'll set this one to 10 for the length. And I'm going to set the angle to 0. It means whenever these these parameters are set to zero, it, 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 it means that distance and angle criterion are disabled. So length is going to be the only one being used for that particular case. So we'll start to lower the value right here by uh, by step of two. So if we go four, for example, and then go, go three, now we start to get a little bit more uh, information. Basically, the length determines if uh, a given length is greater than three uh, in terms of, of uh, actual space, uh, 3D space. So this is expressed in soft image unit space. If I go two, then I'm going to. So it means that this particular edge here is actually a little bit too long, so it has to be subdivided uh, to be able to get the actual edge shorter. So as I type in values here, I'm going to increase the density of the tessellation until I meet the criterion. Mental Ray internally has a goal which is the length. So it will basically cycle through all the all the edges uh, to determine if the edges is actually longer than the criterion or smaller. If it's longer than criterion for example it will need to subdivide it. Uh, the subdivision process is actually controlled by the subdivision limits. So if you say zero, it means you're allowed to not do any subdivision at all. But you can go up to three level subdivision and actually it's more like one, two, three. So it's really three levels of subdivision. Now obviously if I increase this value to seven, for example, then I'll, I'll start to increase the actual density. In this case, we don't see a difference here because the criterion has prevented the actual tessellation to go beyond three because the uh, the actual criterion is not as small uh, compared to the actual value here. So if we let's say we go back to one then what even though we have uh, set it to one it means that it, it is not allowed to go m one subdivision refinement uh, uh, because the actual minimum and maximum values are are explicitly set setting or saying that it 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 cannot subdivide more than once. So even though you make this value very very small, well right now it's pretty small, but um, if I make it very very small, it will just say, oh I got a lot of work to do, but I'm only allowed to do it in one pass and obviously it never gets to the, 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 the very fine tessellation because the actual subdivision limits are too restrictive. So obviously if I set this one to 2 I'll get to uh, the next level and then if I get the 3 then I'll get even finer. If I get the 4 I'll get even even finer than what we had before. Right now because of these this settings we're really not triggering the adaptive portion because we just say you know just subdivide evenly everywhere because the the the, uh, the criterion is so small that it's not doing any adaptive uh, tessellation at all so let's uh, put this one back here we'll make it 0 0.25 for example and we'll uh, and this is actually a good technique for uh, adjusting the uh, 
the LDA or parameters is is to lower the actual min max back to zero one or zero zero setting the actual length to the new values you would like to the test and start to increase the actual subdivision uh, the subdivision to the the right level by by incrementing it uh, uh, by step of one uh, for example until you really meet meet the perfect you know smooth look that you're looking for so this is uh, this is the actual uh, technique to adjust the geometry approximation uh, for nerve surfaces now what's going to happen uh, when displacement map gets added to the equation it's uh, it's going to use this sets of triangles as a base to displace the surface so for nerve surfaces there's really two tessellation stages one for the surface so turning the uh, nerves definition into a set of triangles which define the actual surface and then from there the displacement engine will further break up the triangles to be able to meet the displacement map detail that it, that are needed and this is based on uh, other techniques so you can actually tessellate the surface using an LDA angle but you could go under displacement and use for example parametric or even fine so you really have a very very precise control over the uh, NURBS to mesh conversion and, and, and basically mesh displacement map uh, process uh, because you have a, a, a sets of control for every stages now um, this is a, a good overview now we'll uh, we'll go over uh, distance just to show you that actually distance is actually pretty difficult to tune um, so what I'm going to do is set this value 10 put this one to, to 0 and I'm, I'll start to decrease it so even though I, I really need to have a value that is below 1 most of the time now I'm starting to pick up some details right here so I'm let's say for example I put it 2.1 I start to get barely some tessellation and a little bit better uh, value better uh, surface definition here so let's divide it by 2 now I start to get a little bit more tessellation so let's go by 25 because the values are so small and and such you know changing the value uh, just a little can have a huge impact on tessellation so it's actually very difficult to predict the result using distance method so I would strongly suggest that you avoid using distance for now now um, now let's try let's try to use uh, both let's say all the criterion at the same time right now because I was sending the length and distance to zero I was explicitly ta uh, say, you know, informing mentally that only angle was used in this case so even though I, it was set to uh, length distance and angle because two was actually set to off it in fact it was only using angle in this case so uh, I'm going to actually start to tune uh, both parameters now so if I say five now I'll get a, uh, a, 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 a given you know tessellation state as you can see here I don't get that much triangle because uh, everything is based on angles now if I go under uh, length for example and I say 0 0.25 now what's going to do is it's going to blend the two methods so you'll get the result of one method and the result of the other method, method tessellation methods to be combined into one sometimes it's a little bit overkill because you uh, angle may do a, a fine of a job and length also could do fine of a job so all together it may generate too much triangle so in this case what you do is you use the length distance or angle it means stop recursing stop tessellating when either of length distance or angle has been reached so if you change this and as you can see now I will be able to get the best of both worlds so I'll get the fine tessellation of, of length and also fine tessellation of angles so that really creates a, a perfect balance between the two methods so depending on the actual result I want to do this is quite uh, uh, quite good uh, the settings so I invite you to watch the other session about uh, displacement map thank you